There's no cure for COVID-19. It's a virus. We don't have a miracle drug that's going to get rid of it. My name is Ryan Nelson, and I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician. I split my time between the intensive care unit and the pulmonary clinic. It's a respiratory virus, meaning it's uh, transmitted through respiratory droplets. The lungs are by far the most commonly involved system, uh, but we also see every other system be involved to some degree. Uh, the ones that are most pronounced uh, are gonna be the heart. It's very common to see a myocarditis or some uh, dysfunction in the heart's uh, ability to pump. Um, the kidneys are another very common organ that are affected. Uh, about 20% or so of patients are described to have some sort of renal failure. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, hematological system, the blood, exactly. We're seeing patients have blood clots that uh, can travel from their, their legs to their lungs, a pulmonary embolism. Uh, there's young people having strokes. When it comes to viral infections, our, our treatments are in fact very limited. The, the most important thing I would have to say to treat COVID is supportive care. Supportive care means give them oxygen if they need oxygen, make sure we avoid complications from COVID such as secondary bacterial infections or blood clots from immobility. When we move on from just the supportive care and we think about ways of treating, remdesivir is our antiviral that we have the most data on now. Limiting viral replication, the hope is that we can lower you know, numbers so that the, the immune system can more easily get rid of it. So that's the antiviral. And then we talk about immune modulation. The one that we have the best evidence for and are considering standard of care right now is, is dexamethasone, which is a steroid. Steroids have anti-mutant properties or used very commonly in all types of medicine for immunosuppressive effects. And dexamethasone was shown in a large trial to actually improve mortality. Vitamin C, vitamin D, and, and, and zinc. So all of these also are, are thought to have a lot of immune modulating processes. Vitamin C is, uh, you know, works on reactive oxygen species, it's an antioxidant. Zinc we know can influence viral replication. And then vitamin D uh, also has some immune modulating properties. And, and we do know that the patients that are at highest risk for COVID are those with comorbidities, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, older age. And, and a, a large proportion of these patients are actually vitamin D deficient. They don't get enough vitamin D. We give these therapies, they haven't been shown in large, large trials to make a huge difference but they have very little downsides if used appropriately. We do have to be careful though, and I wouldn't advise patients to just use them you know, without the direction of a physician because in excess, anything could be bad. And then the last part of that immune modulating response is gonna be the convalescent plasma. The patients that have previously been infected with COVID-19 have created their own immune response to the body and they create antibodies. And these antibodies live in the plasma, um, part of the blood. Uh, by taking plasma donations from patients that have been previously affected, it and then transfusing it into a patient with active disease, we hope to augment their immune system and allow uh, their body to recover. There, there's certainly hope here. I, I, I definitely see you know, a lot of promise in the vaccine trials. There's been over 10,000 publications uh, since this came out. People are really interested in, in trying to figure out how this disease process works, what are the best treatments. One concern that I have about how effective the vaccine is gonna be is, is how many people buy into it. The FDA and everybody are being very careful on making sure that this is gonna be a safe and effective vaccine. But if we don't have enough uh, individuals buy in to get the vaccine, the vaccine will be effective because the only way the vaccine is gonna work is by getting herd immunity. The more individuals that are immune, the less people that the virus has to transmit itself between and the, the lower chance that it has of, of surviving. And anticipate that we'll come out stronger at the end of this. Um, and I just hope that it's not too much longer.